The snowy splendor of Bear Hollow Mountain. Well, that's some cold feet today. Doesn't keep the TWRA's Josh Campbell and intern Kyle Sykes from making their rounds. 16 and 67. Okay. It's mighty cold, around 16 degrees. Because it's cold, anything we see today is going to be real, real lethargic. No matter, Josh and Kyle are searching for something special. Oh yeah, I got some good pretty ones in here for you. To these guys, there's no better sight than a pile of slimy, slithery salamanders. These aren't that bad. They'll, they'll coat you with a good coat of slime as a part of their defense, but uh, they're, they're not that bad. In fact, the more the better. They're becoming isolated because of the destruction of wetlands. That's why these are so important here on the Cumberland Plateau because there's actually few wetlands up here compared to what's down in the valley. As with so many species, there's concern for their future. They're real sensitive to loss of habitat. This fence surrounds the wetland and was constructed by the TWRA to intercept the salamanders as they travel from the woods, their normal habitat, toward the wetland here where they breed from December to March. They walk up to the site and they hit the fence. They just walk along the, the fence and then fall in the five gallon bucket. Thousands of salamanders have been found in only two months. And these are the two species we catch most often here at this site. And this is the spotted salamander and then on the left is the mole salamander. Six of the male spotted salamanders. While I'm separating these spotted by male and female, uh, that way we then can weigh them and then what we can normally do is we just take an average and they weigh 86 grams. The numbers are important. While many of us rarely see a salamander, these animals reflect the health of their habitat, the very woods and wetlands surrounding them. Not very many wetlands up here on the plateau can you go and find over 8,000 spotted salamanders breeding over a and be able to capture them over a two month period. TWRA biologist Chris Simpson is helping to log today's information. It's a good sign of water quality, good sign of uh, land conditions, soil conditions, uh, tree canopy. And a good sign that the salamander's future appears safe, as long as this wetland, known as Barking Frog Swamp, survives. But a majority of salamanders in this area will use this type of habitat to breed. So when you lose that, you affect not just these species, but many more. Got a four-toed salamander, drab brown on top. Then what's really pretty about them is their stomachs, spotted like a Dalmatian. These small, shy animals may be part of an unseen natural world. I think that's one of the prettier salamanders in this part of the state. But it's one that is vitally important to the lives of many animals, big and small. Three female spotted. Once identified, going to be at 70 grams. And weighed, yeah. the salamanders are sent on their yeah. way. These guys will actually go into the water here once they get acclimated to being out of the bucket. As the seasons change, frogs and snakes will appear and become a part of this survey as well. It's a pickerel frog <clears throat> moving in to start breeding. It has a good healthy mass of uh, spotted salamander eggs. For now though, the spotlight is on the salamanders. Some there, and there, and there, and there. Their current health and the prospects for their future. It's gonna be a real good population of spotted salamanders assuming all these hatch. I'm Alan Griggs on Tennessee's Wild Side.